Hello and welcome to Media 7. I'm Russell Brown and we're coming to you from the television studio of AUT University in Auckland. The depth of Rupert Murdoch's image problem in newspapers can be summed up in something that happened in the country where he owns no newspapers, New Zealand. However absurd or implausible it was, John Key's recent lightning of the Herald on Sunday's actions to those of the news of the world said all that needed to be said. The masthead is a byword for filth. The Murdoch papers are now at the centre of twin reviews in Britain and Australia, both of them weighing the need for stronger regulation of the print press. We'll examine those, but first, Sam Mulgrew does the numbers in the source. After 168 years, the News of the World, Britain's biggest and juiciest Sunday paper, was living on borrowed time. One in six Brits used to buy it, keeping abreast of the page three girls, which proved so popular, Rupert Murdoch made the feature a registered trademark. But since 2009, The Guardian newspaper discovered a £1 million hacking hush-up. Simmering discontent has morphed into utter public revulsion. 5,800 people were hacked, perhaps more. It's become so huge that hacking victims are now asked to apply online for damages, while Murdoch keeps puffing the same old stuff. I'm shocked and appalled at what's happening in one small corner, which is the news of the world, but everything else is fine. Well, the books say it is. News Corp's net profit last quarter was $875 million. Revenue was up 5.7% to more than $8 billion. And while its share price has fallen, it's still more than double what it was after the recession. Heir apparent James Murdoch keeps resigning from boards and he's quietly slipped away to the cooler climes of New York because some of the stuff just ain't cool. Murdoch knows how to pull political levers. David Cameron, John McCain and John Howard all did their best to jolly Rupert. And now, just across the ditch where Murdoch's News Limited owns 70% of the press, claims of attempted bribery of a politician. Gillard is on the warpath. So perhaps now, after 60 years in the media, the tail is wagging the dog. Sam Mulgrew there with the source. The press reviews have become big news in themselves, as Jose Barbosa demonstrates. Two countries, two media inquiries, one news organisation. It really is Christmas. The Leveson Inquiry in the UK has two aims. To examine the culture and ethics of the press and to address unlawful conduct by News Limited and other media organisations. The inquiry's been relentlessly covered, most media focusing on testimony by famous people. Hugh Grant wasted no time today in showing morning, his utter contempt morning, morning. for certain sections of the press. I cannot for the life of me think of any conceivable source for this story in the, in the Mail on Sunday except those voice messages on my mobile telephone. But the inquiries also heard from the likes of the McCanns, who were callously fingered as suspects in the disappearance of their daughter. The Portuguese police named the McCanns as a guido, meaning that they could be asked questions in the presence of a lawyer. But the media portrayed them as suspects, and the worst of the coverage began. The clear message that was going out uh, nationally throughout Europe and internationally was that there was very strong evidence that our daughter was dead and that we were somehow implicated in her disappearance. The inquiry will ultimately decide the extent to which media regulation is or is not working. Australia has a wide-ranging review of media convergence underway. It's supported by a small government-initiated inquiry examining print and online media. So those working in the industry are outraged at what's seen as a political favour extended to the Greens. This Gillard government is held to ransom by the Greens. They're having an inquiry at the Greens' request, at the Greens' insistence, for no reason other than that Bob Brown demanded it. The inquiry's also been vilified as a thinly veiled act of revenge on the Murdoch Empire after years of bias against Labour. The Daily Telegraph have a democratic right to be biased, and I have a democratic right to point out their bias. We therefore need, Mr President, media that is independent and diverse. Former Judge Ray Finkelstein will review the Press Council, 
which is a voluntary industry body. It's largely seen as a rather weak organ. At the moment, the press council, if you were to honestly you know, turn the cameras off and all put your pens down and say, what do you think of the press council? There'll be a lot of laughing. And there are some glaring regulatory holes to patch up, as pointed out by Media Watch's Jonathan Holmes. You watch 10 News on the Ages website. If there's something you think breaches the rules of good journalism, can you complain to the press council? Well, maybe, though 10 News isn't a member of the council. Turns out that in Australian law, a service that makes TV or radio available on the internet isn't a broadcasting service. This means it isn't covered by journalism codes of practice. And what of Rumpelstiltskin, who made all this possible? If you're in media, you get into controversies and you've got to take it. Sure. Just as you give it out. It's yes. fun. And it's fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Mr Murdoch being staunch there. Now, one of the journalists in the thick of the action around the Leveson inquiry is The Guardian's James Robinson, who is turning out stories even as he live tweets the inquiry's proceedings. I put it to him that some of those wronged by the papers in the past seem to have been relishing the chance to tell their side of the story. You do get the sense that this is an opportunity some of them have been waiting for for, for many months, if not years. Um, and they've given really graphic accounts of what it feels like to be in the, the centre of a media storm uh, and followed by paparazzi and besieged by reporters uh, and in their view wronged by newspapers um, many, many occasions uh, over, over, the, over the years. Is there a danger of all this star power overwhelming the purpose of the inquiry? All we've heard so far is uh, big names uh, who are world famous talking about how uh, they feel about the press and really it has been a the evidence has so far been, you know, a, con a condensed, uh, the, you know, like lowlights of the worst of the press, the British press, certainly, over the last decade. I mean, really crammed into one week of evidence, it's been unremittingly grim and one-sided account of just how terrible the papers can be. How is this going down with the public? Are, are people engaged with it? There's a sense of uh, the public feeling that celebrities are playing the game, playing the fame game, and, there, and there's less sympathy. There's still sympathy, but less sympathy for, for, for famous faces. But people who've had terrible experiences like the McCanns, uh, to hear their um, traumatic tales about their treatment by the press, you know, that really is getting through to the public. And, and, and that's, if there is going to be a change in the law and a change in the way newspapers and photographers uh, uh, behaved and are legislated or, or regulated rather. I think it's the evidence of those victims like the McCanns which will ensure that happens if it does. Are journalism stocks as low as they've ever been at the moment? Um, that, well actually they probably have been lower but only once and that was when um, Princess Diana was killed of course tragically all those years ago um, and the paparazzi were blamed for that and the newspapers were blamed for buying the pictures the paparazzi took. I mean that, that, that was the really the, the low point of the, the press I think. I suppose the irony is that we only know about these things because of the work of journalists at your paper who've had to butt heads with the police, politicians and the Press Complaints Commission. Of course, that, that is, that is a, an irony and, and that many have commented on in, in this inquiry. Um, that of course it's journalists that bring these things to light in the first place and it, and it would be of course a huge mistake to try to crack down on the press or introduce re regulations which pre prevent good journalism from taking place. I mean good journalism does involve bending the rules and even on occasion breaking the law. That's, that's the reality of it. And if there's a public interest defence um, that is sometimes justified. But it is, it's a cliche, I know, but you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and introduce rules that will restrict journalism of the kind the Guardian, and uh, Guardian's Nick Davis um, uh, did so well um, and has been doing so well for now two years now following this story and really leading the, uh, leading the way with this story. How important will Lord Leveson's findings be? Will it just be a report or will it be acted upon? Um, his findings will be taken seriously, no doubt. Um, the question is um, whether the politicians who, have, who need a good press and want a good press and need to cultivate newspaper proprietors and always have done, whether they will have the, the guts, quite frankly, uh, to implement his findings. Of course, it depends in part what exactly those findings are and how restrictive they are on newspapers. Um, but the, uh, t uh, you know, something has to be done 
You know, the, the government cannot has to be seen to act. So I think his, you know, his re his recommendations will be implemented one way or the other. Meanwhile, the spectacle continues with Alistair Campbell's statement being leaked before he's even given his evidence. Yeah, I mean, uh, exactly. A, a well-known website here, uh, run by a, 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 a guy called Paul Staines, who uh, uses the pseudonym Guido Fawkes. He um, obtained an early draft of Alistair Campbell's witness statement and published it, which again illustrates the problems with it regulating the press. Guido Fawkes run, runs a website. He's not employed by a major news organization. Uh, he operates on his own. Uh, he, he's not subject to the PCC's rules or regulations. He can't be disciplined by the PCC. Uh, you know, it's, it was quite apt in a way that, that this uh, information was leaked to a website because it just shows you of course, the change in nature of news and just how difficult it is to legislate and regulate an industry where the internet uh, allows people who are not traditional news organisations to disseminate, disseminate information. And of course, that's even more the case with the Twitter and other social media uh, websites, which enable you and I and every individual, members of the public, to do the same. So that's a question that Leveson will have to address too, I think. Will he dwell on this question of whether to regulate internet publication? Well, they'll have to. They'll have to talk about whether to, uh, how newspapers certainly, and their online uh, the, the arms uh, uh, and publications are, are regulated. Um, I mean, I don't think there's a suggestion that he will try or has the authority to come up with a whole load of rules on how the internet's regulated generally. Of course, it's, it's not regulated. That's, the whole, that's really the whole point of the internet. But he certainly has to apply his mind to just how, uh, how newspapers interact with the internet and how easy it is to try and stem or control the flow of news when the internet exists as a way for that news to, be, uh, to, to come out um, in its purest form. Finally, we've seen lurid stories in the first week of the inquiry. What will the second week bring? I think Leveson will take evidence from other regulators in other industries and try and get a, uh, some, some uh, feeling for how other industries are regulated. Of course, TV over here is regulated in a very different way. Journalism, uh, uh, you know, journalists can be subject to fines. Uh, and stronger sanctions on, in, uh, in, in TV than they are in print. So he'll look at that. And then further down the line, which I think will be very interesting, finally the newspapers themselves, the editors and proprietors, will get a chance to tell their side of the story uh, and give evidence on, on, uh, on, on how uh, they obtain news and how difficult it is to get hold of news when you are confronted with a whole culture of spin and you know industries which are devoted to to trying to get messages across that aren't necessarily true, frankly. So that'll be, that'll be the next great moment, I think, when newspapers justify their own actions. Guardian Media reporter James Robinson. After the break, we're over to Australia and then back home.